So guys, let's do some exercises on system curve. Uh, if you haven't seen what's a system head or a system curve, please go back and check out the videos. We're going to do a set of three exercises and we will make very important conclusions. So here we go. They ask you for this system, we got point A, we got point B, we got the length, we got the pipe size here and here, we got the valve here and we got a elbow, we got the height, and we got the length of this pipe as well so and we got the pressures which is atmospheric so for this system they tell you to create the system curve what does that mean is essentially find out the head of the system which is how much pump requirement is needed for various flow rates so let's do it i actually did this in an excel sheet spreadsheet if you want to check it, I'm going to add the link on the, in the comment section. So let's do it. Inlet flow. Okay, here we go. We have this velocity. Let's say it's a proposed velocity. We got piping data, two and three inches. I find out to be these diameters. I change it to meters. Then calculate the area of each pipe, and then the velocity. What velocity do we have? Since we have this volumetric flow rate, you just need to divide volumetric flow rate by area and you get this velocity and this velocity. Now, because we're using steel, I use the pipe roughness of the steel, which is 4.6 times 10 to the 5. Divide this by the diameter, which is here, and I got the relative roughness because we're going to use it for Reynolds number. Uh, actually, no, for the friction factor. Now let us calculate Reynolds number, which is density times velocity, which we have, times the diameter, which we have, times the viscosity, which probably is given in the statement. Well, it's not given, but let's suppose it's one centipede. You can open the sheet to have direct access. Mm. Since Reynolds is too big, both are turbulent, so we need to calculate the friction factor as either with the Moody's chart or the chain equation. I used chain equation and I got these two values. Mm -hmm. And the friction factor for turbulence is this. I actually used, I used chain equation and used an infinite number of Reynolds and I got this and this. Fine. Now, that was piping data. Eventually I want to calculate the pipe wall friction. So I need Length, I got 20 meters in the first pipe and 8 meters in the pipe that is 3 inches long. Um, I divide length and diameter, which is here. So 20 divided by 0 0.05, I got this. And 8 divided by this, I got this. Now I need the velocity head, so it's velocity to the square power, uh, to the second power divided by 2, right here, right here. And recall that by definition, if I want to calculate the friction of each pipe, I need to calculate the friction factor, the friction factor which is right here, and where is it? L divided by D, which is right here. The velocity head is right here. So multiplying these three factors, I got the friction loss in pipe number two, and I do the same. Friction factor in pipe three, L divided by D in pipe three, and the velocity head. I got this right here which is very small because one, it's very huge, a very small amount and the friction factor is not high. Uh, I got a total amount of 50. Nice. Now let's continue with the fitting some valves. I got one valve right here. So this is 340 times FT or the friction factor evaluated in infinity or turbulence. So I got 340 times 0.019, I got this value. This is the K value. And now the K value for this elbow is 30 times fit, uh, sorry, not fit, 30 times the friction factor in the turbulence, which is 0 0.017. I got this number. So I add these guys up right here, and the shape due to friction is 0 0.28. Nice. Now it's time to actually calculate the head. For this system, where is it? Well, yeah, here. I'm going to calculate the change in pressures, the change in gravity, and height 
the change in velocities, and of course, this right here, the friction. So the change in pressure, since it's atmospheric pressure, it's zero. The change on height is four. The velocity heads is inexistent because we have zero and zero, A and B. And, well, let us change everything to joules per kilogram. I need to multiply the height by gravity. I got 39.2 joules per kilogram. And the friction, which is here, 50 plus 28. So the energy requirement is about 40 joules per kilogram. But recall that we are using meters, so you need to divide this by gravity. I got 4.1 meters. The power requirement will be this times the mass flow, which is this volumetric flow rate, times the density, which is 1000. I got this value right here. In what? So nice, that was exercise number one. This is the... So get access to plenty of problems. Go to the practice section right here. And you will be able to see that I have plenty of problems. Actually, I got almost 140 problems about friction, pumps, uh, mechanical energy equation, Reynolds number, pressure drop, all relevant to mechanical energy is here. Empty and tank to Richelli's law, Reynolds law, and so on. So go on a register and you will have access to plenty of problems right here. System head for one volumetric flow rate guys. So this is the system head for this volumetric flow rate. Uh, now imagine doing this for 0, 10, 20 and so on until you get to 300. So de definitely let me tell you that the diameter will be the same, the area will be the same, the velocity will be changing every time because we have different, different flow rates. Uh, this stays the same. Reynolds number will be changing every time because velocity the friction factor will be changing every time this stays the same the friction will be pretty similar but the head here will be changing therefore we will have also a change on wall friction recall that k may be constant but it is always multiplied by the velocity to the square so I got right here and what else do I need? Well, essentially it's everything, guys. When I do this, and I plot all the head, 4.1 and so on, recall that for 10 gallons per minute, which is about, sorry, to, I didn't tell you, but this is 10 gallons per minute. You can see that in the sheet, in the spreadsheet. Do it for not only 10 gallons, do it for 20, 40, 100, 300 and you will see how the head increases very very interesting so if I wanted to plot this guy which is the system curve I got the system curve in a table each head for each volumetric flow rate recall so we have we got the system head right here and we got the volumetric flow rate here and as you can see it's like a parabola it increases as the volumetric flow rate increases and that's what I wanted to show you guys. Now, let's make some conclusions. The curve is divided in two sections, probably you've seen here. This little part right here, when we have zero flow rate, we have a head. And that's very curious, you will be asking yourself, why do we have a head? That's the head of the height. Even though you don't have velocity, you still need to have this height. So that's static. What's mean, what does that mean static? It means that this will be always present in all the calculations. So static head is all the things that will not change with velocity. Now, you have the friction head, which is all the changes with velocity. So that's why you always get this line, which is the static head. You always get this value assured because it's the height requirement. And all this extra part right here is due to velocity. So this time in this part is relatively small compared to the amount of friction right here. So this is due to velocity and this is due to height. That's the first conclusion.
The curve is exponential or maybe I would say more into parabolic because it depends on the velocity to the square and it is a very important factor guys because this once again only this is due to the velocity so as the speed gets high the friction of a uh, loss due to friction gets higher so even though this and this and this and this were not non-existent and the only difference of these were 4 meters this is the static head static and this is the friction head which changes with respect of velocity or of course with respect of volumetric flow rate so let me give you the conclusions you increase velocity in pipes when you increase the flow when you increase volumetric flow rate you increase velocity in pipes you increase the velocity heads in this case no because we were static so they were in the tank very static but if you were operating in a pipeline you will increase the velocity in each pipe the pressure A and B will remain the same because it's the same system the height also remains the same because it's not affected by velocity and the only thing that also changes with velocity is friction so just take that into consideration and I think you're pretty done at least with exercise number one you just need to understand the conclusions make of course more exercises this was done for a very simple problem actually it's very simple look we have no pressure differences we have no velocity differences even though we have different diameters we don't have differences and it's only one pump you don't know where is it you didn't, didn't calculate any suction pump or the charge pressure and so on and uh, yeah go check out more problems and continue with exercise number two which is also very interesting this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here if you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.